Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the physiology of respiration. So we're going to start by drawing the lungs. So we have the trachea, the bronchi, and we have the lungs, the rib cage, and the the diaphragm. And then we have the respiratory tree, like that. All right. So, what is the process of respiration? Respiration is the process in which the gas exchange happens. Um, as simple as uh, it can get. But how can the body get to obtain the gases from outside to inside? Well, this is what respiration is about. So the process of respiration itself, the inspiration, expiration, we're not talking about the metabolic part of uh, the process of respiration, we're talking about the mechanism of respiration. So the first part that we have in the process of respiration is inhalation or inspiration. We have to know that inspiration is an active process. What does active here mean? It means that it's controlled. It's controlled by the brain. We have a center of respiration in the medulla. This center will send orders to certain muscles to contract and this will lead to the process of respiration to take place. So we have the active muscles of respiration which are the diaphragm and we have internal intercostal muscles, not the external ones. The external ones are responsible for expiration, as we're going to talk, or as we're going to see later. So we have the diaphragm, and we have the internal intercostal muscles. When those muscles contract, they will lead to the expansion of this area that we have here. But before talking about this, we have to know something very important. In order for the process of respiration to take place, or inspiration to be more precise, uh, some pressures have to be changed. It's all about a change in pressure. Because the idea is simply, we have air outside the body, yeah? That air has a pressure, which is the atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure has to be higher than this pressure here in order for it to, to go or pass through the respiratory tree into the lungs. Because if it's less, the air will go from inside to outside, not outside to inside. It's a very simple concept, like osmosis. It's a physical um, material, air, like water. When you have osmosis, water goes from high concentration to low concentration. Same here, we have a high pressure of air, it will go inside the lungs where you have a lower pressure of air. And that lower pressure of air is obtained by the process of respiration. Why? Here in that area, so between the lungs and the pleura, between the lungs and the pleura, we have a pressure. It's called intrapleural pressure. Intrapleural pressure. Why do we have a pressure there? Well, it's simple. You have a space, you have a volume. What is pressure? Pressure is mass divided by volume. Mass in a certain volume. 
So you have a volume here, that space that we have, and you have the plural fluid. You have the plural fluid right there. So you get a pressure. What do you think will happen if, in the process of inspiration, the diaphragm Well, the diaphragm in that case is relaxed. When the order comes from the respiratory center in the medulla, it contracts, it goes down like that. It comes more like flatter, like that. In the same time, the ribs go like this. The rib cage becomes bigger. And you can notice that the volume increased. In the same time, we still have the same amount of fluid inside. So what do you think will happen if this increased? The pressure, they are inversely proportional. The pressure will decrease. The intrapleural pressure will decrease in that case. So when that happens, when we have a low pressure here, the lungs, because they are elastic, the air will tend normally, naturally, because of its higher pressure, to go inside, to fill them, for them in, in order for them to get a bit bigger, so that they will fill more space to normalize the volume back to get this to the value that it was at in the first place momentarily and then when the brain decides okay the contraction should stop the diaphragm will go back to normal relaxed the ribs will go back to their initial state and that after this pressure went back to normal it will increase it will increase more because why because we have the lungs they are bigger now but the space went back to normal so we have a higher pressure and that higher pressure will compress on the lungs forcing the pressure to increase in the lungs more than the atmospheric pressure and there will go out causing what we cause what we call the process of expiration that's why inspiration is active because it involves a command from the brain from the medulla to be more specific from the medulla so muscles contract you spend energy on that while expiration is happens when the muscles they just relax so inspiration is active ex expiration is passive that is the concept of the process of respiration now a very important thing to know when you read through this you'll find that they uh, describe the intrapleural pressure, for example, using minus 5 or minus 7.5. That value here is not actually a negative value because it's physically impossible for a pressure to be with a negative because neither the mass nor the volume can be a negative value. So it's impossible for that to happen. Why do we have a negative here? Because in neumology or um, when we talk about respiration we do not mention the actual value of the atmospheric pressure like 760 millimeters mercury so on and so forth no we just when we say atmospheric pressure is zero the value is zero and when I say minus five I mean that it's less it's less than the atmospheric pressure if it's a positive five it's more than the atmospheric pressure with a certain value no more, no less. But it's not actually negative. Alright. Now the last thing that we need to know is 
Throughout this process of changes and pressures, how does the alveoli manage to stay open in that case? So the pressure in the lungs will increase, decrease the airways. How do they manage to stay open as well? It starts from the alveoli. Well, we need to know that the alveoli have a very important factor, which is elasticity. In their walls, they have elastic structures. So the first thing is elasticity. So the elasticity of the walls keep them open, but that, that's not enough. A very, very important factor is called surfactant. When you have a bit of fluid in the alveoli, water, you know, if there's a little bit of water in the alveoli, the pressure of that water would be 18 millimeter mercury. And it will be very hard for the alveoli to keep their uh, the walls in position and they will collapse or burst. But with the presence of the surfactant, this drops to 4. 4 millimeter mercury. So what is a, what is a surfactant? What does it exactly do? The surfactant is a, a the substance with a hydrophilic part and a hydrophobic part. A part that likes water, a part that hates water. So hydrophilic likes water, hydrophobic hates water. And when that's the case, when you have a substance like that, it decreases the tension between the molecules of water. It decreases their density. And by doing that, when the density decreases, when the tension decreases, the pressure falls. The pressure decreases as well. And it becomes very easy for the alveoli to maintain their walls open. By collective summation of all the alveoli there, if we go backward through the respiratory tree, when you have all of those alveoli maintaining their pressure, keeping their walls open, that translates to the next and the next of the airways or the previous um, parts of the airway to be more correct. So then we have also the bronchioles are open, even though they just have cartilage, they don't have, they're not as elastic as the alveoli, they don't have elastic component in their walls, but because of the alveoli that maintain their walls open, collectively that will also manage to keep the airways open, in normal conditions, of course. The surfactant in the alveoli in the human body is called, just for you to know, it's called dipalmitoyl. Dipalmitoyl phosphatidyl choline. Dipalmitoyl phosphatidyl choline. This is what the surfactant in the alveoli is called. So that was the physiology of respiration. I hope it was easy and clear for you. Next time we're going to talk about spirometry and the different volumes of the lungs. We will see how can we trace the process of inspiration and expiration on graphs and what do we understand from doing that. Until the next time, I thank you for watching and see you. Click here to subscribe in order to be notified when new medical video tutorials are uploaded and to check the older videos of medical tutorials and also high school tutorials.